All right, what's up? Tim Sykes here. Uh, Pre-market video lesson on this awesome run-up on S-O-U-N. Congratulations to all challenge students. Jack Kellogg absolutely nailed it in last week's webinar. Um, I want you to leave a comment underneath this video. Say thank you, Jack. Awesome call, Jack. Good job, Jack. Um, he's up around $130,000 on his uh, position. Freaking awesome. More than just the money, though. He nailed it. And this is why you challenge students, you need to tune into every single webinar, either live or archived. There's so many tips. And the cool thing is, because it's not just me giving webinars, you get multiple strategies. Jack Kellogg, arguably the most successful penny stock trader of the last few years. His webinars are priceless. The last great penny stock trader from the previous generation a few years ago was Tim Grittani, there's 70 plus archive webinars from Tim Grittani. So you should watch the old ones, you should watch the new ones. You're always constantly learning, okay? And I'm gonna post a link. Some of you challenge students don't understand it and you're not watching enough. A lot of you aren't even challenge students. So I'm gonna post a link to this. This is where I create my millionaires, okay? Some people say, Tim, stop talking about it. No, I'll never stop talking about it. This is not just a job for me, this is a life mission. And I am so damn proud of every single one of my millionaire students um, and upcoming millionaire students. So I'll post a link. You can join the challenge. Those of you in the challenge, watch the webinars, okay? This is the webinar. This was on uh, February uh, 22nd, 2024. It's a little over an hour. You know, it's funny because some people, uh, it, it's, it's interesting to me when people on uh, social media like they say like, oh, no one ever spots this stuff in, in real time. You miss it. And, you know, this guy says these breakouts always look so clean. Uh, you know, it's it's so clean in the rearview mirror. Uh, you, you wish that you had seen it ahead of time. Well, Jack Kellogg did see it ahead of time and he nailed it. Let me just play a little of this webinar just so you understand. This isn't like, oh, he just mentioned this stock in the webinar. This was his big idea in this webinar, in his own words. Listen to him. All the way up to 780. Didn't think this was going to happen on the gap up. I thought it was going to be weaker, like one of these gap ups on previous earnings, but just absolutely roasted and went. So this one he's talking about NVIDIA. NVIDIA is like the market leader in AI, if you're not aware. All the way, almost to 800 now. Um, and I think there is a major trade looming right now, which is SOUN. Uh, this was a former AI runner back in February of 2022. As you can see, it set a very, this is probably why it's been slow. Beamer drive is updating or whatever. Um, so it, it set a high at five on volume and then later in the summer, another high at five. But like we always talk about, volume is the most important thing and we are trading way more volume than we traded when it ran last year. And exactly when we went over from the previous webinars, if you've been paying attention, we've talking a lot about the hammer candles. All right, so then he goes into it. It's a little technical. Um, challenge students, watch this webinar from February 22nd. It was posted on February 24th. Today is February 27th, okay? And actually, Jack Kellogg is texting me right as I'm doing this video. Let me just see what he said. So he, he sent me a screenshot um, where, you know, he he bought it. Uh, he has like this small account where he bought it at 376-ish, um, 45,000 shares. And, you know, <laughs> like I said, like this is a small account for him. It's funny because now he's made, you know, close to 13 million. But 130,000 roughly uh, unrealized. I think he locked in like 39,000. Um, or I guess it's just P&L today. I don't know. The point is, is he's up huge, okay? And he nailed it, um, and I'm so proud of him. And, and I really want every single one of you to congratulate him, um, you know, in the comments below. Challenge students, watch this webinar. If you're not in the challenge, get in the challenge. These, these webinars are legit priceless, legit life-changing. You don't have to just look in the, the rear view mirror uh, like this guy says, you know. And for me, FYI, I, I didn't take the trade, okay? S-O-U-N wasn't moving very fast when he was talking about it. I was like, 
this is good for people with bigger accounts because you know they need more volume like plays like Fannie Mae and SOUN. I was trading AXTI, EZFL, MRVI, okay? Um, you know, I'm closing in on 50,000 on the year. I'm taking a lot of small gains on, you know, one-day spikers. But Jack likes the multi-day spikers. This is why the challenge, we have both, okay? You can try a little something from everybody. There's no one right magic formula. Um, take a few lessons from me, take a few lessons from Jack. This is why we're creating millionaires at a faster pace than before, because you have a wider variety of strategies and lessons and more content. Nobody has ever had this much content before. And this is why I need to like push you guys to actually watch this. Like, you know, we posted this webinar on the weekend, what a few hundred people and, and look at the ratings. It's, it's funny to me when these life-changing webinars aren't even rated very highly because people don't realize how useful and valuable the information is. There's like this whole debate on social media with like edge erosion and should I even study? And I'm like, you absolute morons, study everything. There's no edge erosion. There's no, there's, there's no missed opportunities if you actually study. I didn't take SOUN, okay? I've been trading other stocks. But at the same time, I'm aware of it. I'm very proud of it. And guess what? Now I'm learning from it. And I'm going to watch this webinar. It doesn't matter I've been trading for 25 years. It doesn't matter how many millions I've made. I'm still learning. So you can always learn. Um, and, you know, just want to give major, major props to Jack Kellogg. He had the conviction. He went in with size. Um, you know, when he gave the webinar, by the way, it was in the 390s. Um, and it, it failed. Even if I had taken it, some people say like, Tim, you know, like you should just take it. If you copy another trader and you have your own rules, it probably won't work out because he was talking about it when it was like 390, 395, it went down to 375. I keep my losses so, you know, close. I would have cut it in the 370s. He gave it more time. Uh, he had wider, wider risk levels, wider goals, and he nailed it. So I don't regret missing it. I don't regret saying that I'm not trading it when I was trading, you know, AXTI, MRVI. By the way, uh, AXTI was my earnings winner play. Um, and this one keeps going. And I sold it in uh, one newsletter, uh, my short-term newsletter, but I also have a Supernova newsletter. And I'm still holding it in my Supernova newsletter. And it finally broke out. And this is why it's good to have multiple strategies yourself, right? Because you can trade these stocks a little differently. Um, and you know, I got a little freaked out by this, uh, morning drop. I was kind of disappointed yesterday morning, uh, for my weekend trade and I got out basically break even, but supernova newsletter, I give it more time. Um, and I'm still holding and you know, it looks like it, it probably can retest the highs here in the high fours, maybe go to the fives. This is another AI earnings winner. So long story short, you got to study, learn from all these webinars, learn from all these plays. Um, find what works for you. And, and I'll actually probably put like Jack's webinar on uh, my YouTube channel just so everyone can watch it, um, this one. But you challenge students, you really should be watching it um, and all of his archive webinars and all of Tim Gritani's webinars archived, Mark Crook, you know, Mike Huddy, um, Jack Schwartz gave a, a challenge webinar. Like so many millionaire students are giving these webinars going over their mindset and it's priceless. It's literally priceless to understand the mind of a millionaire trader because there's so few. And I'm so proud that I have several dozen now. Um, and it's it's really cool. It's like, you know, an art gallery curating like the top artists. Um, and trading is an art, you know, and that's why I, I think it's fascinating to learn. Um, just awesome patience by Jack. Awesome call by Jack. Please congratulate him. Um, in the comments below, sorry, I'm losing my voice. Um, I, I also was flying yesterday too. So, you know, I, I would have missed this whole thing. I'm not really good at, at holding a, a big fast mover like this while I'm flying AXTI. I have a little more confidence in because it's just a, a slower mover. Um, but also remember to take profits too. You know, <laughs> I'm, I'm not even going to say anything to Jack. I would, I would take profits here. Um, you know, they're also doing some offerings. So it's, it's not like it's a great company. It's just a, a beautiful market for AI plays. And I think it's also a short squeeze. So we'll, we'll see how far it goes. 
Congratulations, Jack. Uh, challenge students, I'm also giving a webinar later today, 2 to 4 p.m. Eastern. Come ready with questions. I'll see you guys in chat. I got to make my watch list. So many plays. Congrats, Jack. Congrats to everybody on SOUM. What a move in the market today. QQQ up 3%. Very happy long-term type stuff today. Big, big move in the market. Probably one of the biggest moves we've seen this entire year. I mean, the gap up was literally gapped up on air and continued to push higher, which is something you don't usually see. Kind of reminds me of this candle right here where it just, it should have failed. I feel like it should have failed today as well um, in this candle, but because when you got to keep in mind when uh, the market gaps large in either direction, there's often the op opposite trends going to happen like this where it gapped up pretty big and sold all the way off or this time when it gapped down large and got bought back up. Uh, so these days are very impressive in the market. Obviously, it had to do with NVIDIA. NVIDIA beat earnings, of course. And oh, what is this? NVDA B earnings and is up from a low of 645 to 780. Just clearing the 750 breakout and continuing to push all the way up to 780. Didn't think this was going to happen on the gap up. I thought it was going to be weaker like one of these gap ups on previous earnings, but just absolutely roasted and went all the way almost to 800 now. Um, and I think there is a major trade looming right now, which is SOUN. Uh, this was a former AI runner back in February of 2022. As you can see, it set a very, this is probably why it's been slow. Gamer drive is updating or whatever. Um, so it set a high at five on volume and then later in the summer, another high at five. But like we always talk about, volume is the most important thing. And we are trading way more volume than we traded when it ran last year. And exactly when we went over from the previous webinars, if you've been paying attention, we've been talking a lot about the hammer candles. So on this large gap up, oh, I should probably say the news first. Um, so yes, it ran with NVDA, but it also has ties with NVIDIA. NVIDIA owns uh, 2 million shares of this company. I'm not really sure where the news is. I'm not the news guy. I can hardly read. Uh, so somebody find that news for me. But um, like we were saying, the hammer candles are getting hammered on major volume and it's continuing to hold right around this $4 area. Um, so I really like it because of the news that it has to NVIDIA and NVIDIA making all time new highs at 15%. So in my mind, if this starts to uptrend towards the breakout level of 420 and can set lows and dips can hold 420 and we get an increase in volume um, after this major gap up that's been stabilizing, I think that this has a chance to push um, up and it's not a trade where it's gonna be like, and this is what you guys need to understand. HOLO, right? I mean, this thing went all crazy, crazy, crazy high, but you need to keep in mind that this type of, of candlesticks, although a lot of people might prefer this, is this is not something that I prefer because of the risk that is entailed with it. If you're on the wrong side, it's going from 50 all the way down to 14, or it's going from two to 50, or it's going from 33 to 100. And no matter what, you're not gonna be able to get the type of size that you want because of the volatility. Whereas something like SOUN, SOUN, you can get a much tighter risk to reward and it's not going to essentially blow off um, and go to 100 or, or 75, but that's not what I want. I would just love a couple dollars a share move up on max size. 
on something that I understand. I mean, this is a huge chart developing almost one year later. It's been, it's up from a dollar and it's held. NVIDIA owns a, a stake in this, in this company. So, now we're lagging. So as long as Nvidia can stabilize and doesn't have a major panic down to 700 or you know 690, 700, I think that we could po possibly see so and make a move. So that's my position right now. Um, I bought some today on this. Once I saw it make a double bottom, I bought some at 393 right here. Just been holding. Obviously, it's not doing anything right now, but. Once it starts maybe holding higher, I'll look for an ad. Um, if it starts breaking below 380s, I'll probably take my position off, but still keep it on watch as long as it's over 350. But with NVDA moving so much today, I kind of expect this thing to have a bid within the next couple days, few days. So if it's not, if it's still just doing nothing by like Tuesday, I think my thesis might be broken. So I have a time stop as well as technical levels where I possibly can stop out on um, loving these hammer candles and over 420 100 you know 50 million 200 million share a day uh, I think it'll be on does that make sense does anyone does anyone understand that am I the only one seeing this setup So at the end of the day, it's still a scammy cheap penny stock, but when news is involved with the single biggest uh, large cap runner of the year, you know, that's when I take news and all this shit into consideration. Yes, might have been focused on the wrong ticker QBTS. Sounds like Sohn has a bit more of an edge, but I like the higher volume and tangent seats in the video. Yeah, QBTS is another one that I've been watching. It's it's the next closest setup. Um, kind of feels like we're right here. So I don't know when these stocks are going to get going, but it kind of feels like into March if we continue to hold that we could see some some blow offs um, on these moves. QBTS also making hammer candles, holding higher and higher and higher and higher. So Honestly, QBTS is a very good secondary watch to this entire thesis. Do you guys see any other ones? NONX, NNOX has too much range and it's also below the lows. So I have zero interest on this stock. This, this is not like um, the other few to me. way too whipsaw i mean look at this it goes from eight to 15 back all the way back down to nine and then it goes from nine to 14 then all the way back to nine again so super super whipsaw i like to focus on these nice slow movers give me fanny mays 
you know? Fannie Mae still on this channel too. It's crazy. This is going to be a major setup if this thing breaks 152. So a lot of stuff to watch. GXAI. Yeah, for me, this is uh, also not something I want to watch because it's a fresh chart and there's no, it's only traded for a few days. Super, super whipsaw. It did have a nice move today for sure. But, you know, once again, like there's, there's no trading this or feeling comfortable in this type of price action. For me. If you're going to make a swing trade based on a sector. Now... I still will trade that kind of stuff, but that's like a day trade type thing. A R R N F is halted pending news. It's going to open tomorrow, I believe. I fortunately sold my position in 28 when it failed to continue higher on Monday. After seeing this volume, I wanted to see it push higher. Um, but I had a nice swing trade after these two hammers that we talked about um, getting in at 21, 22, and selling up at 28 for 30%. And I'm still keeping this on watch too, but this has nothing to do with Nvidia. AITX, this would be the last thing to go. But I would love to trade this thing again. This is like one of my favorite tickers. Someone would have to go a lot higher before this thing even would get a bid. Nobody really cares to trade this shit anymore, guys. You know, people hardly tr care to trade SOUN. But it's the right idea. It's the right idea to look at AITX because it it's ran with Nvidia before. So this thing is just getting dumb. You know, hundred to almost eight hundred now, and like a, less than a year and a half. Thoughts on Lunar landing the at this afternoon? Um, I don't know what to think of it. I feel like it's gonna. I feel like it's gonna crash. Uh, pretty hard. Not 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 landing on the moon or whatever. I think the stock's gonna crash. Um, because it's just kind of like a buy the rel buy the rumor sell the news type thing. But since it's down from thirteen already down to the nines, I have no interest in short selling at that high off the highs. But hey, if this thing wants to re-break out and the news actually sends it flying, I'll play a $13 breakout on it with massive, you know, 100 million volume. But I'm just not interested in short selling it and I, I don't really know what to think of the news. But it was a great trade for me this week. I can kind of go over it for you guys if you want me to. Um, yeah, so I first noticed Lunar. I didn't really know what was going on. But I saw when it had this nice green day, I was like, oh, nice breakout. I saw it gapped up and then failed. So I was like, ah, it's just going to fade off. But then when it gapped up and surprised me a couple days ago, I ended up taking a position on on the long side because I started hearing about the news and I thought they would maybe run the stock up into the news. But I just took note on how clean this thing traded. Like this was such a clean trader. Um, holding all the levels, creating hammer candles on bottom. So five minute hammers 
off previous resistance, now support, um, getting the hammers down here, getting hammers down into this area. Uh, so I ended up taking a position. I started buying these dips, risking 10, which also is a key level. I want to be risking key levels. And then it had a dip and then had another one. And I ended up adding to my position at 1050. Um, so I had about a 1080 average and I moved my risk to uh, 1020. So risking about 60 cents. I took it overnight. Um, I didn't sell any. And then I added a little bit at 12, just a tiny position. Uh, percent more to get my average to 11 and uh, next morning it gapped up I started selling some here and then I sold the rest uh, right here and it was a nice 25k profit traded it perfect uh, and then when it crashed I ended up drawing the line at the previous support level I bought the dip uh, through the nine dollar crack it went lower than I thought it would but it got bought up and I sold the dip uh, into the 10 bucks and then I shorted the bounce into green to red. Once again, draw the line um, into the $11 resistance, which was the close price from this day, which is always usually resistance. I shorted it up there at 1085, and then I covered back down at uh, like 970, 980, and I made like two bucks a share there on 7K shares, so another 14 grand. So I made about 40 grand on Lunar yesterday. It was a great trade, um, but I did get absolutely bodied on SMCI um monday morning so this thing just cratered after having this insane run up and basically i was buying the dip all down here i was buying the dip so i bought a bunch of size like 750 because this is an a plus setup for me considering it, it crashed didn't bounce crashed again then crashed again on a gap down monday morning so i bought um I don't know, like a thousand shares or so around 750, kind of targeting this blow through 820 to 850 for sales. Um, and then it came down and it did have a nice strong bounce right here. And I was up maybe like 20 grand or 15 grand. And then it just started to come in and I had to cut my losses down here uh, in the 720s and 730s when it was breaking low a day and, and lost about 25 grand there. So um, if you cancel that shit out, I'm up about 15 grand on the week. I've had a few small trades, few small wins, whatever. Um, this absolute rocket ship up to a thousand today, pretty much with the Nvidia stuff going on. So, I mean, if this thing breaks through with, uh, 1100, I, I don't know, like this market could get even more insane with today. I thought today would crush the market and it, you know, it continues to surprise me again, almost reaching new all time highs. Um, now we're actually pulling a bit into the close. Let's see if NVIDIA is falling. Not really. SOUN. QBTS kind of turning up, holding higher than lower. This is something I might actually consider swinging as well. So whoever brought that up, good job. But it's basically the same chart pattern. Um, this thing just isn't as clean as a runner. Like I hate this fake breakout um and all that but you know this was a great breakout over a dollar and maybe it can continue to keep going who knows yeah rock hooper and scott ask what hammer candles are i mean i've been talking about them on every webinar but what they are is when you see a buyer when stocks dip and they wick. So obviously a candlestick, I hope you guys know this. Uh, this is the open price right here and this is the close price. And then the wicks of the candles are showing you how high the stock got intraday and how low the stock got. So when you see a large wick to from the downside up, you know that when this stock dipped, there was a buyer and somebody bought it all the way back up. It dipped, somebody bought it all the way back up. It dips, somebody bought it. You see what I'm saying? And it just keeps dipping. And it's called a hammer because this looks like a little hammer right here. You know what I'm saying? So that is a hammer candle. And we've been talking about them every webinar. So hopefully you guys are tuning into those or at least studying those previous ones. Um, they're not a market order. And that definitely shows a la very lack of studying right there. So very disappointing question.
Uh, Scott says, sorry, brand new, just joined last week. I appreciate the explanation. Yeah. Um, well, you didn't ask about the market orders. But, yeah, I understand that you're new. When SMCI failed dip, do you consider the dip one leg lower? I know because that was my max stop out on that thing. Cause I also lost about 20 to 30 grand buying it on the dip on, um, right here. So I ended up shorting it. I had a really, really sick call on this one and I'm really disappointed. Uh, I, I mean, this story hurts, uh, but I was like, I feel like SMCI, I was saying this the night before, I think it's going to open at 1050 spike to 1080 and then drop all the way to the mid to low 900s. Um, and it actually did that exactly. So I shorted the stock perfectly in the, in the 1070s with my entire account, my entire small account um, for me. So I was able to get like 653 shares. Like I shorted it down to like the last share they'd allow me to short. And the stock cratered, um, but that, that was great, right? But the other thing was I was, I was trying to buy $25,000 worth of puts at 1070. And I also said, I want to buy the same day expiration puts when they have a morning spike and I want to sh uh, take 25 grand worth of puts around $5 um, for expiring today for like 980 strikes. And those puts went from five, um, you know, even right here where I covered my short, they had already uh, 10x over 50, so it would have been 25 grand to 250, uh, which have, would have doubled my year um, on a 25, you know, trade with with risk. And this was just a setup where you can get all the size that you want in the world. Um, and this is, you know, really an A plus setup. And I wasn't able to get those options because E Trade didn't allow me to do zero DTEs, zero days till expiration. And I ended up missing this trade. So <clears throat> that that sucked. Um, but I ended up covering the short. I made like 75K or something. And then I bought the dip at 880. So same thing as Lunar. I drew the line into the support right here at 880, which was the previous day's high. Um, right here. So, you know, here's your resistance. Here's your support, here's your support. Straight drop should theoretically have a bounce. And I thought I'd have a bounce to 950, so I bought the dip at 880 with 1,000 shares. And it bounced to 930 and I didn't sell any. And then I ended up puking it down here for a loss, but then I was like, oh my God, it held the double bottom. So I had to get back in. So I got back in 890 and it was working again and then it just failed to work and I ended up cutting my losses into the the support crack. Um, so I lost two times on that, like 15K each time. And I was up a bunch and I didn't sell it because I wanted it to go to 950 to 960 and it never went there. So I ended up just unfortunately um, taking two losses and then the same thing. It just, it never really gave me the big bounce that I want. And if you zoom in, it's a bounce, right? But zoom out and look at the bigger picture. Like it does not even look like a bounce when you're looking at it like this. You know what I'm saying? And right here too, like this does not look like a bounce. Obviously this looks like a bounce, um, but not this other stuff. SMCI is still pushing higher. This is just disgusting. Uh, I didn't trade it today, but it very impressively is up. 100 points plus intraday like what's going on with this thing you know what i'm i'm saying about this is just crazy Okay. Will you load up on a basket of lower priced OTC AI stocks if more momentum comes into the sector? Yeah, I, I 
don't ever see OTC stocks run in sector plays anymore. Like we hardly get any. So I'd need to see, I'd first need to see small caps to go to even consider looking at an OTC to go because OTCs are not gonna go before small caps. It's trickled down, right? So NVIDIA is the big dog and SMCI and it's it needs to be trickled down all the way to OTC, which are where nobody cares about those stocks anymore. I wish they did. I'd love to buy 10 million shares of AITX and ride it up for 400%. Like who wouldn't want to do that? You know what I mean? But unfortunately, nobody gives a shit about OTC anymore. Can you talk to me? Can you talk me out of VERU? Probably. Yeah, there's nothing to talk about here. It's up 9.44%. There's zero volume. It's down at the lows. It hasn't bounced in all in, in one year. Like, yes, this used to be a big runner back in the day, but you can't be buying into these stories because all of these stocks always end up like this. And yes, maybe one day it's gonna go to two or it's gonna go to three on a gap up. And you're gonna be like, ha, you know, I was right for holding. You know, I got bailed out, but you're wasting capital. You're wasting not only your physical capital, but you're also wasting your mental capital looking at this dog shit and you're missing out on other opportunities. You need to keep your mindset clear, clean, freshly cut. And you can't be even, this shouldn't even be something you look at. Like this is just absolute nothing going on, nothing that we teach in this room. And you're just throwing money away and gambling. How are you able to trade after hours with TOS? Do you have additional permission or are you using a different broker? Uh, I use E-Trade to execute my orders in Cobra. I don't trade on uh, Thinkorswim. Hi, can you please look at ARGI if it's worth a swing trade due to recent spikes? Um, no, definitely not worth a swing trade. This stock gets absolutely smoked every time it gaps up. So gap up gave entire gains back, gapped up gave the entire gains back and right back to almost new low, new all time lows. No hot sector, uh, so absolutely not. Someone is doing absolutely nothing but sticking, sticking to a new support level. The video looks like it'll close sideways. Looks like you need tasty trade. Not sure what that is. Hijack on your recent web, you said you don't trade options. When did you start or do you only trade during very specific situations? If so, what? Thanks. Uh, yeah, so I, I trade options barely ever, uh, but I'll, I'll take the trade if I don't want to put in a ton of money into the, the large caps. I would prefer just to trade the, the shares because it's easier. And I believe you have an advantage trading shares because your risk is a lot lower. Um, but obviously you can't make the same type of gains. So it's only for special situations like that SMCI trade. Do you think SMCI move could be options hedge tomorrow's Friday? Wondering if it yanks hard again tomorrow. Maybe. I don't know. That's not my strategy. Four, six, five, five says, thanks for the ass whipping. There's a little thread about SMCI and Ravel and how those so-called zero DTE puts perform, including the, some of the options. I don't see the thread. Maybe I can't load it because I'm not on my account. Q 
Keto says, oh, liquid options by the TOS guy. Cool. Yeah, I'm not really an options trader, so I'm not going to get into it like that. But I requested access to zero DTEs for the next opportunity like this in however long. But yeah, I'm pretty much done with options. I did take an options trade on the video today. I took some puts into this push, kind of thinking that the gap would fail. And it hasn't failed, obviously. And I still have that position, but I've already lost pretty much everything I put into it. Um, because I did tomorrow's expiration and it just kind of is a hedge for my zone position, but that's what I'm watching. Hey Jack, when sizing up, am I supposed to feel comfortable with how much will I lose if I'm wrong or should I size down where there's zero emotions? Uh, depends on your journey. Are you a consistently profitable trader or are you just learning? Yes, consistently profitable. Uh, yeah, I, I would size up personally for me because you get into this game to make money and make more money than you can at a job. Or at least that's why I got into it and to have the freedom. So I push myself very hard to size up, size up, size up, be uncomfortable, be uncomfortable, be uncomfortable, learn to be comfortable, learn to be comfortable, learn to be comfortable. So... I just, I've never, or I never was, pro, uh, I never was not caring when I put on a trade and I was always very nervous, very, you know, I'd kind of lock my, my back out, be real stressed out, having the size, having the position open. And that's how I, I grew into the type of trader that I am. And you got to decide if that's what you want for yourself. Do you want to do that? Or do you want to just you know, use one $200 risk or whatever it is, the number for you and, you know, make 500 bucks, 600 bucks, 700 bucks, 1000 bucks, 2000 bucks, whatever. Or do you want to risk a couple grand to try to make 10, 15, or do you want to risk five, 10, 15 to make 30, 40, 50? And you got to find out where that tolerance is for you too. Like, um, when you, when you trade, trade, trade and make money, it's like, how much money do you really need? You know, do you want to use 50 grand risk to go for 150 K profits as you get bigger and bigger as a trader or where, where do you need to go? You know, for me, I wanted to get up to that risking few thousand bucks, 5,000, 7, 8,000, 10,000, 15, you know, 15 grand, 20 grand when it's a good setup, whatever it is. So for me personally, that's how I went about it. You got to figure out you. I can't answer that type of question for yourself. Let's see if we can get a power hour push on this thing. I the only other position I have open is biddy so still trying to short bitcoin probably wrong but it's bottomed out a little bit right here and i'm hoping it breaks above the 1080s and starts this type of move up uh if it breaks 1020 i'll sell i'm in from the 1050s and 1060s so very tight risk and i think if i'm right and it starts breaking over 11 it could go 13 and the risk to reward makes a lot of sense.
OCGN first green day soon. Possibly, yeah. So making the hammer candles, made a hammer candle here. Clean breakout over 72. Failing from open price, but I mean, yeah, this is another good watch. I think if it gets back over a dollar tomorrow and holds dollar as a support, that's when it'll be a first green day. If it breaks under 92, I'd kind of take it off my, my screen. But so far looking really nice, actually. Why is this thing moving? Does anyone have the news on this? And does anyone have the dilution on that? Been watching trading tickers. Do you do do you do shorts on overextended gap downs like Gertani? Any difference on the setup listed versus OTC? Yeah, I do the overextended gap down. I don't love that uh, pattern though because they're usually one a liquid. Sometimes they gap down too much. Sometimes they can push back, and your risk is huge. So, how is the difference between OTC and listed? Um, I trust them less on listed. I trust them more on OTC because there's more of an inefficiency on the sell side. I tried SMCI short for a couple of days on tiny size because I really just wanted to wait for the first red day. Once the first red day came and it broke the downside so hard, I felt like I could not get a good entry without risking a stupidly large bounce like I did on 2.6. What should I do to combat this? I had a plan and set up ready for a week while it ran straight up but lost confidence that's why it's an a plus setup that's why it's going to work because of traders that are did the same thing you did so this is all chop look look at these candlesticks right like this is the only really clean thing i see but like you see like these candlesticks are so choppy that when it finally creates three clean green days and moves up a you know, few hundred points and then gaps up into a key $1,000 area. When this thing, uh, when this thing does turn, it's going to be clean because you see these candlesticks are not as clean at all compared to these three. So you need to understand the dynamic of the setup has completely changed. What would you say your bread and butter short setup is? SMCI, but on the lower priced stock.
two different releases about OCGN will present a, a biofarm conference. Okay, Monday, February 26th. Okay, so maybe we can see a, another breakout on this on this conference. That was the news which started the run in the 40s. What's the dilution on this, Stefan? I don't know how to read biofarm bullshit. OCGN, 4.6 months of cash left. Long SQQQ from last week, 11.3, so it was up for five days until this NVIDIA news. My thesis when it was when SPY hit 500, I told myself I'd short the market. Long SQQQ. I have risk of 10 and want to stick to it since I'm still in decent shape, but with this huge gap and continued strength, my mind is not con connect, uh, content as it as it was when I entered last week. Thoughts? Uh, That's tough. It's tough, you know? I'd say stick to your plan, but this is just so fucked today on QQQ that do you change your plan because this is just ridiculous? Like this, I don't know. This like completely changes my thesis seeing this type of move. Like we were starting to kind of, you know, roll over a little bit and now it's just foo. So I guess we'll see. I'd, I'd kind of want to focus on other things or maybe you downsize and use less risk, you know? Stefan says they had, they had a big shelf in place what could be used. Otherwise, not much compared to the float. A couple million warrants. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to watch OCGN for if it's supporting a dollar tomorrow. I might buy some and risk 90 cents and try to sell it at a buck 50, buck 60, buck 70. That's my plan on that one tomorrow. Stefan says to use the shelf, they would need other filings in forefront. So there's time. Okay. Hey man, watching your webinars really turned things around for me. Been focusing on the number five dip by pattern almost exclusively. And I've gone from negative three K to flirting around with break even in just three months. Thanks for everything. That being said, what do you, 
what uh what do you when you see a first green day bounce setup like holo yesterday that had a hard that had its bounce way earlier in pre-market i tried to buy the dip to red to green and it went nowhere uh yeah so i i'm not really a first green day guy it's not really a good question for me but considering it already made its move in pre-market i i think that that was kind of just liquidity for them to sell more shares into the gap up What kind of criteria do you look for when judging listed multi-day breakouts? They tend to be much more or much uh, less reliable than OTCs. So it needs to ideally be in a hot sector. Are we in a market environment of the market going up or the market going down? How much Kool-Aid's in the market? What time of year is it? Um, what is the stock's previous history of attempting multi-day breakouts? Is it a bullshit pharmaceutical uh, biotech company or is it a real company? Uh, is there a forward-looking catalyst? Is that over or near a key level, like key half or whole dollar number? Is it making more volume than usual?
with OTC breakouts, I assume the list of criteria is much shorter for you. Yeah. Just looking for an OTC breaking over key levels. And if it is on a Friday and it's closing sideways or it's uh, a stock that is, you know, in a hot sector and also trading huge volume, then all that. Yes, <clears throat> so it's just really slow, guys. So definitely gotta not expecting anything crazy on this. What do I think of C C C C C C C C? Oh wow, nice breakout. Yeah. Okay. I think this is like a earnings winner, mid cap runner now. This isn't even I wouldn't even treat this like a small cap anymore. There's zero volume. It's seven bucks. So this is false false data on the stock because it's not trading this kind of volume and you know now it's a different trade it's a mid cap it's a hammer off seven mid cap earnings winner breakout over 850 so my plan for tomorrow would be to buy a morning dip down towards 850 840 and sell it through nine and not expect much range out of it depending on the market probably not a trade i'm going to take Yeah, this is just <clears throat> crazy up 16% now over here on the video.
How often have you shorted this year so far? That's a great question. Let's figure it out. I just uploaded my trades last night to Profitly. Twenty-five total trades, eighteen wins, seven losses, seventy-two percent win rate, hundred eighty-five k profit, twenty-seven k loss, two hundred twelve k profit. I'm just, I'm a demon short seller, but I suck at going long apparently. Thirty-seven percent win rate in a bull market. What's wrong with me? Average winning trade ten k, average losing trade four. You know, perfect stats, exactly that three to one I want, 2.93, really that three to one. Remember how I was t talking to you guys? It's all about the three to ones. Look how perfect the three to ones play out with my, with my trades, you know? My max risk is 10 to 15K. I have a couple 40K wins. So... Nvidia up 3 billion market cap today. Jack, how about Biddy? You still short on? No, I actually just cut that when I left for a little bit ago. I cut it at 10.51. I'm not doing this. It's, it's, I bought it. Where did I buy it? The market was weak, so I was buying it this day and it gapped up and it was fine, but I'd rather just take a tiny loss. Like this is not what I wanted to see. I, the QQQ is going to close at the high of the day. I don't know. I thought the market was cooling off, but this shit brings a whole new wave back into it, in my opinion. Honestly, your teaching is remarkable. You make it to easy to understand and really boost confidence and just say thanks for doing this for nothing. But after 3.5 years in the challenge, profitability hasn't come. Losses are reasonable. That's why I'm still here. Just psychology trading is very, very difficult and you make it seem effortless. Profitability seems so close. Yes, so far away. A, A, A. Hopefully you can keep doing this for as long as you can. Thank you. Yeah, uh, great little message there. Really appreciate that. Yeah, I just try to keep this shit simple. It's just, uh, you know, I look at it as a video game. I, I try to detach the money as as, mo as much as I can. I don't really care about the money. I, I care about how much, how much size can I get on setups that make sense to me and why they're going to go up or down in my head. And just trade. That's it. What's your take on Fannie Moy at this point in the pattern? Good question. Fannie Mae, have no position on it right now. Um, honestly, what I'd want to see is a perk above 136 on big volume. Or I wouldn't want to see a drop to 120 on big volume. So it's just sideways right now. Is it going to perk big? You know, 20 million shares over 140? I'll literally buy as much as I can. Or is it going to dump to 120, 115, 110, and is it going to be off my radar? Because 
based on the stock's history, every time in previous years when it breaks out, it goes for at least a little bit. It's broken out here, it's broken out and gone, broken out and gone. And eventually this thing is going to just rip um, through a breakout level. And I'm pretty confident it could be the 150. Just really nice uptrend all year. We'll see though. Breakouts are kind of getting a little bit weaker in terms of percentage. So I'd love to set a new all-time volume high, like 40 or 50 million shares. Go to like 250. Hopefully this thing can get going because, you know, obviously the more NVIDIA goes up and this thing doesn't find a bid or a push, the more unlikely it is that it's going to actually go with this. Not even the AT&T sell out of Shea could cool this market off today. Yeah, unreal. Thoughts on VYTX? I don't know, I can't find it. Do you think IGBK a good trader for small accounts? Yes, I mention that all the time. I would buy this only if it breaks 1-3 though. I'm not playing guessing games here when there's a very liquid OTC ticker. Lunar dumping 850 thoughts after landing news. No idea what's going on there. I'm trying not even to look. VTYX, huh? I don't like the range on it, but pretty nice little chart, I have to say. Just a biotech company, nothing I really want to trade. See, keep OCG on watch. Thoughts on QBTS? I went over QBTS. I like QBTS. RGTI is also going up a bit. the IWM doing up a percent looks pretty bullish all right guys I'm gonna go ahead and end it here and go see uh, what I want to decide to swing overnight with zone and yeah so hopefully it was a good webinar and I'll catch you guys on this thing next week.